All right, so today I'm going to talk about AWS's Security Token Service, or STS. STS is a web service that allows you to request temporary, limited privilege credentials for your authenticated users. And to authenticate, maybe you're using IAM, Okta, or some other integrated identity provider. So let's imagine you want to give them access to a service that you spun up, like maybe a custom API or some code running in Lambda. And your customer's got this on-prem application that needs to be able to securely access this fancy new service. In that case, after they've been authenticated, you're going to want your customer's application to be able to assume an IAM role that you've set up that'll temporarily grant them only the minimum permissions needed to use the service. Okay, so I've logged into AWS and I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate how I can create that function and then a role with a policy that allows it to invoke that function and then I'll create a user with a policy to allow it to assume that role. So the first thing I want to do is create the function. And I'll do that by going to the Lambda page and I'll create a function. We'll go ahead and author it from scratch. So the first thing I'm going to do is give it a name and I'm going to select Python as the language because that's the easiest way to put some inline code. And I'll just use the default execution role and click the Create Function button. Now that the function's created, I want to copy the ARN. I'm going to use that later. I'll also copy the name. And we can take a peek at the code. And it's your basic hello world. Hello from Lambda. Now that the function's been created, we can create a policy that will allow the role to invoke the function. And we do that by going to IAM. Now that I'm on the policies page, I'll click the Create Policy button. And I'll select the Lambda service as the type. We'll filter for Invoke. And here's the Invoke function option. And here's where we can use that ARN. I'll click Add ARN and, and paste it here. And we can click Next. Now, of course, we've got to give it a name. Click Create Policy, and there we go. It's been created. Now we can create the role to which we can attach this policy. I'll click Create Roles, and the trusted entity type for this role will be an AWS account. Now for added security, we want to give it an external ID, and the way we can do that is generate a UUID. And of course, there's a tool for that, so I'll go ahead and copy the ID, and I'll paste it here. Now we want to select the policy that we just created, and we'll hit Next. We'll give it a name. Now this is the part where we want to define the trust policy. By default, this policy trusts anybody who's authenticated within this account. For added security, we could update the principle with the user's ARN that we're going to create. For this demonstration, I think this is fine. Now that we've created the role, we're going to want to grab that ARN. And now we need to create a policy that would allow the user to assume the role we just created. So I'll go back to the Policies page, click the Create Policy button, and here I'll click STS as our service. We want to allow Assume Role. And here's the part where we add the ARN of the role that we just created. And again, we want to create a name. And click the Create Policy button. Great, now that we have the policy, let's go ahead and create the user. 
Now this account is more of a service account that's going to be used by the client application on-prem to call STS and assume the role. We don't want to give it permission to log into the AWS Management Console and in fact we don't want to give it any permissions other than the ability to assume the role. So we'll just click Next and we can click Attach Policies Directly and that's where we want to select the policy that we just created. And here's the Assume Role Policy. So we'll select that and hit Next. Then we'll just click the Create User button. Now that the user's been created, we want to give it some security credentials so it can be authenticated. And we'll click on the Security Credentials tab. And again, we're not creating a username and password. Instead, we're going to create an access key. Now, AWS wants to check on the use case to make sure that we're using access keys for the right reason. Now, in our situation, we're going to have an application running outside of AWS. So we'll click on that. And it says that it's OK to use an access key for this use case. And it gives us some best practices that we should follow. Particularly, we want to rotate those access keys regularly. Now we can click Next and create the access key. Now because this is a demonstration, I can go ahead and show you the access key in the secret. But of course, I'm going to delete this as soon as I'm done recording. And you should never share the secret. So I'll copy the access key. And I'll copy the secret access key. Now it's making sure that we've saved the keys because once we've created it, it won't show it to us again. And that's great. Now we can go ahead and update our client application with all these new settings and see if we can get it to call that Lambda function successfully. So I've decided to build a C Sharp console application as my client. So I want to make sure that I have the AWS SDK installed, particularly the security token library and the Lambda library. And here you can see I have those installed. Now we can go to our program and update the values. So we got an access key. And here's our super secret secret access key. Remember, you don't want to share this with anybody because if someone has access to this, they can make calls to your AWS resources and really rack up your bill. Now remember, this is a demo, so I'm going to go ahead and delete this as soon as I'm done recording. And here's the ARN for the role. And we said we can't assume the role without an external ID. And of course, we need the function name. Now this is really important. Make sure you have the right region endpoint. In our case, we're using US East 2, which is Ohio. OK, we can try building our code and make sure it compiles. The code builds. Now I'll go ahead and hit debug, and we can step into it and see what happens. First, we set the values. Then we build up an STS client. And then we build the assume role request with all the values. Now we've successfully assumed the role. Now we'll new up the Lambda client with the values we just got. We set that function name. Build up the request. And now we've called the Lambda. So far, so good. If we mouse over the response, we can see that we get a little 200. And that's what we're looking for. Now let's go ahead and continue and print the response to the screen. And there we go. Hello from Lambda. All right. I hope that helped.